Well, first and foremost, you know, it is a phenomenal development for Africa to have the Africa continental free trade area. Now, this brings together economies uh, essentially about almost 3.3, 3.4 trillion dollars. So that makes it the largest in the world in terms of number of participating, participating countries, the largest free trade zone in the world. Uh, a lot of progress has been made, actually. You have 44 countries that have actually signed on to the treaty. So, in fact, trade uh, in terms of liberalized trade uh, frameworks can, can proceed uh, within those countries. 90% uh, of all of the items um, have actually, uh, in terms of you know, eliminating tariffs on all those things, have been actually done. There's been a lot of talk in the run-up to this particular summit about implementing uh, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Uh, what are some of the stumbling blocks you're still seeing that need to open up and have this thing move forward? Well, first and foremost, you have to realize that a lot of uh, trade in Africa is still largely informal. So trying to get the informal trade system into more formal trade system is important. So a lot of education, a lot of training is very, very important. And in particular, I'm particularly you know, interested, most of the trade you have in Africa is actually done by women. So they can actually, you know, many of them may not be educated, but good, look, they run the continent. So making sure that they have the information they need, they can move from one place to the other without any form of harassment of any kind. So that's still a lot of work to be done in that particular area. The second area where I think a lot of work still needs to be done is getting the one border posts to be there. So it's very easy for um, a good, a goods to move very quickly uh, across the countries. And third is that you have smaller and medium-sized enterprises accounting for almost 80% of all of those that are actually in the business in, in Africa. So continuing to make sure that the trade we're talking about facilitates the smaller and medium-sized enterprises to be able to engage significantly in that, I think it's, uh, it's very, very important. And finally, if there's anything that's more important is we have to continue to make sure that people can actually not you know, move. If you can't move, you can't trade. There had been some concerns about a slowdown post-COVID of the African economy. Is this still the same case or are you projecting growth and do you see that your targets will be met on infrastructure development and other areas where you're heavily involved like food security and so on? Well, actually, you know, Africa has done very, very well against all of this geopolitical risk uh, globally and also the uh, turbulence in the financial markets and despite also the rising interest rate that has actually led to a lot of um, uh, outflows of, of capital um, out of Africa. Nonetheless, uh, you have a continent that we, we just released our African uh, macroeconomic outlook report for the continent where we showed that Africa is growing this year, uh, projected at 4% and this year and next year, GDP growth rate and the world's um, you know, uh, GDP growth rate will be 2.7% this year and 3.2% next year. So, you know, if you're swimming, you keep your head above water, that's good enough, you can breathe and so on. But that said, you know, I really believe that for Africa, we still have a lot of poor people. We must be growing at anything between 7% and 10% for maybe about 30 years. So it's a lot of work to need, that needs to continue to be done. But just to, to add into that, the question of debt, has been hanging over a lot of African countries, especially uh, after COVID. Is that a real issue for you as well? Oh yes, it is a big issue for us. Um, you know, if you take a look at what has really happened in terms of debt, you know, from the COVID situation, you find that the economy is locked down. African countries still need about $428 billion just to recover from the, uh, uh, from the COVID-19 situation. And then suddenly you had the Russia's war in Ukraine, which is actually now driven up uh, prices for food, energy costs, you have inflation, that's imported inflation, driving up inflation in the continent. And you also have currency depreciation for many of these countries, which means that a lot of debt they have taken, which are actually dollar or euro bond, uh, on the euro bonds that are denominated debt. But debt service cost now is very, very high uh, for, for them. And as the Fed authorities in the US actually tighten interest rates and interest, I mean, monetary policy and interest rate goes up, African countries also trying to fight inflation, also have contractionary monetary policy. But guess what? That also drives up interest rate. Now, do domestically, many of these countries also contract domestic debt. And so which means that externally, your interest rate payments are going up. Domestically, your interest rates are also going up. So I think there are three things that we must do. First is that Africa cannot run up a hill carrying a backpack of sand, uh, of debt on its back. We have to resolve that debt issue for Africa. So th there are lots of things we're working on globally. Um, which is the debt uh, service suspension initiative. I think that needs to be renewed for many of these countries. And secondly is the G20 common framework, 
where the private sector and the public sector debt are being treated in the same terms. You know, we have that being done uh, for Chad, we all have it being done for, Zamb for Zambia, and also for Ethiopia. We need to make greater progress on that uh, with the creditor committees. And last one is the special drawing rights. The special drawing rights can go a long, long way. We're working very closely with the IMF, uh, my sister, uh, Kristalina Georgieva and her wonderful team at the IMF on this particular issue so that the, the SDRs can also be issued or rechanneled through the multilateral development banks. And you know why that's important? As multilateral development banks, we can leverage the SDRs at the African Development Bank, for example, three to four times. Okay. Dr. Akin Rumi Atasina, President AFDB Bank, thank you very much for your time once again. We do appreciate it. Thank you.